welcome to the QLTS School podcast, and tonight we're joined by Jerome Dickinson in Brussels, a former student of QLTS School, and now admitted to the role of solicitors in England and Wales. Jerome, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Mark. Uh, what's the background to your legal career? I um, have an undergraduate degree, law degree from the UK, from the University of Sussex. I uh, later went on to um, do an LLM in Canada, and while I was in Canada, I learned that I was eligible to take the uh, the American bar, the New York bar, um, which is what I did. And then I came back to Europe and was, you know, considering different ways of qualifying in in uh, in Europe. And, and the natural choice was to come back to my jurisdiction when I'd done my my law studies, the UK. And when I came back, the, the system was being completely overhauled. We went from the QLTT system to QLTS. So that's how I heard about the QLTS and pretty much decided to, to go ahead and uh, to take the test. Okay, so how has your legal career taken shape to this point? I uh, qu- did a couple of traineeships with well, Herbert Smith and Paris and the link makers in, in Brussels, and um, I specialised in um, initially in IP. Uh, IPIT law, and then went on in Brussels to do uh, EU competition law. Um, right now, I'm working for a, a, a Belgian firm who, who specialise in uh, EU competition law, and they're of course very much aware. Being in Brussels, having lawyers from uh, qualified in different jurisdictions, that they they're used to having different people from all over the place. And uh, often, you know, when you're already say qualified in the US, and you need to qualify in the EU to uh, to have all the advantages of you know Belgian local lawyers. They encourage you to take the um, British equivalence exam or the, the French exam. In my case, because I had done my, my law in England, I was in, strongly encouraged to uh, to take the QRTS, which is, again, what, what I did. Why did you decide then, having seen what was involved in the QLTS, to take a preparation course? In the US, when I took the New York bar, I, I think close to what, 80% of the people who take the American bar exams are used to taking private courses bar review courses. I mean, it, it really, really enhances its chances drastically of passing the exams. So people, you know, don't even think about it twice, besides to you know, take a private course. You know, when I came back to Europe, um, I heard about the QLTS. I decided to look at different bar review courses, of course, because, you know, I was in a bit of a this um, atypical situation where, you know, the exam was just being introduced. <clears throat> Many of the usual course providers didn't have their, their courses up and running. There's only a few. So I, I call a couple amongst which um, the QLTS school. They didn't really have a program up and running, but they were willing to do a pilot program. So you know, at this point, I was very worried at, at one point because you know I, I was probably um, close to a month away from the exams and I didn't have the materials. I mean, you know, I like to think of myself as you know, someone who can put two and two together, but I, I still I still need the materials. You know, if you give me the materials, I can do a decent job. I didn't have any materials because none of the course providers had the materials. And the QRTS school, well, we're trying to find solutions to help me out with, with materials. And in the end, that's what they did. And when you talk about the three modules, I should just clarify that the first module is the multiple choice test, which that's your black letter law, your, your theoretical knowledge of the day one outcomes. And then Day part two and three, maybe you could tell us a little bit about those and, and your experiences with them. There was a written part, and then there was an oral part. So the OSCE was the, um, the part the second part two of the exam, what I call part two of the exam, where essentially the examiners don't actually test your legal knowledge, but they test your people skills. Um, I try to see how you react. So they, they hire, it's very really funny actually, because they hire actors and they have all sorts of different scenarios, and they want you to be able to communicate the law to people who don't, do not have a legal background. So for, for instance, I mean, um, I think from one of my exams, I, I think I had, I don't want to say a drug dealer, but I, I don't know, criminal law or something, but someone who obviously, the actor was very good and, you know, really very credible, didn't, obviously didn't know anything about the law, and, you know, there was no point in, in talking uh, in hardcore legalese. Uh, I had to somehow simplify, vulgarise the, the law to someone who didn't have a little background so they could kind of understand what, what the implications were for them. Yeah, so, so, so it, was, it was an interesting experience. And, and I thought that, you know, the, um, through the preparation I had with the uh, QRTS school, um, I had um, a personal tutor and we used Skype a lot. And again, you know, different scenarios, different scripts were given to me and I had to act accordingly. 
So I, I think I was pretty well prepared for different types of scenarios, whether it's a criminal law or, you know, maybe someone just trying to establish a partnership or a company, um, you know, depending, again, on, on the topics that you have, whether it's criminal law, business law, or any of the other subjects. Uh, the scripts are very realistic, and, um, you know, it's up to you to, to make a, uh, a very good job. This is quite an important point, I think, because the OSCE and TLST, it's a different kind of assessment to what most people in the UK and even abroad are used to. It's not something you can study for in a book and, and practice on paper. You actually have to actually develop your skills and get out there and, and practice and, and have that kind of support and feedback. Sure, and, and you know, that's, that's very uh, right of you to, to, you know, to, to mention that. Of course, there is a the part of the course materials that are received have to do with the actual topic, and you have to study the, you know, the different chapters, and they're very important. But I think the, con- the whole consolidation towards the end when, when you revise uh, has to do with you uh, putting these this knowledge in, into practice and having a, um, a, an actor in front of you and you being able to, to bring out your, your knowledge but in, in a real life scenario. What is tested from you by the examiners is not so much the legal knowledge again but it, you know really your, your, your people skills. Um, so what was your experience of studying with QLTS school for the OSCE and TLST modules? Um, I think it was very good. I mean, I, I, I uh, was fortunate to have, again, a, um, you know, one um, personal tutor for me, one of the PLT school tutors that I, I met through life. So we would see each other via, you know, um, a video camera through the internet. And we would have daily meetings. I mean, we would probably like, speak or, or see each other, I don't know, three, four, five times a day. It was, it, it was, it was a woman who gave me um, homework. She was very astute. I mean, she 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 gave me all the uh, yeah, all the tips. Um, so I thought I thought she was. I mean, her advice was very very good. And of course, at the beginning, I mean, I was my performances were catastrophic. <laughs> but yeah, I had to start somewhere. And you know, I mean, I suppose you learn by doing. You make mistakes, and at the end of the day, I mean, it, 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 it paid out. I mean, I, God knows there were times when I was panicking. But yeah, in the at the end of the day, I mean, um, I came out with a pretty good mark. Uh, we, were you in the UK whilst you were preparing, or were you abroad? Because I was in Brussels, uh, I was preparing for the exam from Brussels via Skype. Okay, so you found that you were able to prepare quite adequately, even though you weren't based in the UK. Yeah, but the funny thing is, um, you know, when I, when I looked at some of the other candidates for the exams, I don't know if they all use the QRTS course and other uh, course providers, but... Um, they were all from what Australia, America, New Zealand, um, you know, uh, predominantly Anglican countries. Uh, but there was another girl who was working for Fresh Fields in Brussels. So yeah, Brussels is another place for people who take the QLTS exam. Uh, you know, did you end up meeting up with any of them whilst you were preparing? Yes, because we were all on the same boat, and we all had this feeling that we were part of the uh, we were pioneers because. None of the courses were really up and running yet. Everyone was complaining that we didn't have any um, information from um, Catherine or all the course providers. There was a lot of whining and complaining, I can tell you that. And so obviously, you know, we naturally you know, went towards each other and asked each other for feedback for, for, for information. Uh, during the exams, after the exams, we would have drinks, or I would have lunch with her or Start with course number, you know, when, when the exams were over, we all went to, to have a drink at uh, you know, the local pub, and uh, you know, it was nice. So. That sense of camaraderie, especially as you're all feeling your way through together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, don't, don't underestimate it because we were all you know, on a lot, tremendous mass. Yeah, and so obviously, you know, that does create a special bond between people. So, how many hours did you spend preparing a week? It does sound like you had a lot of pressure in a very short amount of time to prepare. So, were you working at the same time, or how did you allocate your time? No, well, the thing is, I think I was very fortunate because I was um, in between jobs when I took the course. So, I think most people, not say pretty much all of them, were working and had, what, one, two, three weeks after to take the exam. In my case, I had a good month. So I had, I had set myself a program with a tutor that I, I got, I received through the uh, QRTS school. And, but I mean, you know, having said that, even during a month, it was, it was, it was very intense because I think I spent, yeah, a good, like say two, two and a half weeks reading the materials, reading the, the actual topics, but then spending, say, probably 10 days practicing the practical skills 
that are required for the exam. Again, through the tutor, through, you know, being tested constantly, uh, you know, in real life scenarios, and uh, yeah, so I, I I was pretty much full time, and I probably spent what eight, nine, ten hours a day studying. Yeah, probably even more towards the end. But that's a very intense and also very compact uh, study schedule. How well prepared did you feel? I felt pretty confident. I was stressed. Granted, but I, I became increasingly confident as the exams went because, I, well, you know, in the end, this is the exam isn't that, isn't that bad, and I thought I thought I, I thought I was very prepared, very well prepared um, in the end. But I I needed I'm the sort of person that needs uh, to be shown the format. If you show me, I can again have it, you know, come come up with a decent result. I can perform. If I don't know how to study, how intensively, what to focus on, then. I, I don't really know where I'm going. So to, to me, it was really re- reassuring going through the QRTS school um, because I, I felt that they really, really prepared me really well. And at the end of the day, through this preparation, I, I managed to have a very good score. So what are your roles and responsibilities now? Uh, right now, well, I'm, um, again, based in Brussels, working for a, a firm here, and I, I do EU competition law, well, mainly competition law. I mean, most firms in Brussels are international, but I don't know, um, British or, or uh, American. Um, I happen to be in a local Belgian firm, but uh, I'm in very international um, environment, uh, regardless of people from the qualified in Germany, uh, Ireland, um, you know, uh, Italy um, and the UK, and sometimes even outside Europe and China, Japan and, and the US. So um, I feel like, you know, this, uh, this training has been very beneficial and, you know, it's, uh, it, it was definitely worth it and uh, it's made me stronger and I can definitely use that experience for my, for, for my everyday job, my everyday tasks. Has your dual qualification helped you significantly now that you've, uh, you've obtained it? Well, funny enough, although I did initially... You know, qualify in the U.S. I, I've never done, I right? never practiced U.S. law, and from Brussels, I do EU and U.K. law, a U.K. competition law. Hmm. So, uh, or sometimes you get some some U.K. commercial law. So, um, it, it, it definitely is help. It did, definitely did help me, help me out. I hadn't done English law in in many 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 years, and um, you know, it, it was good to you know review many things, and obviously go into more depth. Uh, other topics I've never done when I was at university for the core subjects. I imagine your current firm certainly appreciates your, your dual qualification. Yeah, it is very well regarded, yeah. Do you have any advice for anyone thinking of taking or currently preparing for the QLTS assessments? My advice, go through a course provider. So, I mean, I wouldn't do this alone. Do this with a course provider, definitely. And uh, who would you recommend the QLTS to, and when would you recommend they start preparing for the assessments? Well, I'm, I'm, I recommend it to um, anyone who wants to qualify in the UK for, for whatever reasons. I mean, um, I think most people who, who took, you know, took the exam with me um, were already working for law firms and had the employers want them to, to qualify in the UK. So, yeah, that, that, that's... I had the luxury to have a month, and, you know, I prepared really well for a month. Other people only had three weeks to take the exam. And when I say three weeks, they had, what, I don't know, two weeks plus a week to take the exam. Because obviously they can, you know, go away from, from work for, for too long. But, you know, and, and they just about passed the exam. I mean, I, th- I think a month, was, a month is a safe bet. Full time a month rather than in between oh, yeah. work and something else. Three weeks is doable, but I mean, I was, I was stressed enough. I was, I was going crazy. So, uh, <laughs> some people probably, you know, manage their stress better than I do. But then I know someone who, um, only had two weeks and passed one of the exams along the other, like part two, but not part three. Yeah, and again, you know, with um, employers, law firms breathing down their necks, saying, well, you know, you, <laughs> you better pass this exam because we're paying. But, you know, it's just not really a way to to work. Because to me, you know, you either work in a law firm or you revise for an exam like this. But you don't do both. You really need to take time off to revise for an exam like this. And if and when you do take time off, you need to have enough time. So I think the bare minimum would be three weeks, and if you can, a month. But I, I, I realise that, you know, it, it's not always um, you know, dependent on you. It does sound like a very intense, very rigorous uh, assessment, let alone the preparation for it. So that's uh, you've, you've provided a fantastic insight into the experiences you've had. Um, have you got anything else you'd like to, to, to add, which I've not thought of, Jerome? I mean, like I said, I mean, it's a very intense preparation, and... Uh, 
you know, I mean, you know, if you're going to do this, you need to do it seriously. Um, and it's it's not. I mean, people say it's a fast track route to qualifying in the UK, but it's uh, <laughs> not. I mean, at the end of the day, it does. If, if you know, if you do, if you basically accept the assumption that you're going to pass the exams in, in one go, it does take at least six months to, to take the exams. Then you have to wait for like an extra month or two to get the results, and it's you know very stress, you know, a stressful experience. You know, it does take a lot of time, and you have to take time off every, for the first parts of the exam, for the MCT, and then you think, I don't know, if you pass the MCT, then four, four, five months later, you have to ask your employer to, to, uh, give you another month, you know, two, three, four weeks off to, to, to revise the exam. So, it is very stressful. It is very stressful. And most people there were very, very stressed. Uh, and it's not, it's not, it's, it's a do, it's doable. It's certainly doable if you put your mind and effort into it. Don't confuse a fast track with a shortcut, then. It, absolutely, it's actually fast track, but yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it's, you can't just click your yeah, click your fingers and, and get it. It's uh, you need you need to, to work. Um, right. Thank you very much, Jerome, for joining us today and for providing an insight into your experiences. It's very much appreciated, and I'm sure you've probably uh, reassured or, or answered the questions of a lot of people who are thinking of taking the QLTS assessments. Uh, so thank you very much for joining us, and I'll, I'll let you get on with your evening.